Maltese kiln at Nile Central in Brewer, Maine. We have some eastern white pine that's in our kiln that's basically almost dry. I'll be checking my sample board shortly. Today I'll be discussing equalizing and conditioning. I will briefly scratch the surface of the theory and stress formation with a few slides and then I'll be back at our test kiln doing the prong test with the sample boards. So why equalize and condition? It all has to do with shrinkage and what effect the shrinkage of certain parts of the board has on stresses within the board at different moisture contents during drying. Stresses must balance, else timber warps the moment these stresses are released, like when a board is planed or deep cut. When looking at a cross section of a board that has been freshly cut, where the inside of the board is more or less as wet as the outside, there is theoretically no drying stresses. We know that timber starts to shrink when it reaches fiber saturation point, which is around 25 to 28 percent. The more it dries, the more it shrinks up to a point. It will shrink more, for instance, between 15 and 5 percent than it would have shrunk between 25 and 15 percent. Timber dries from the outside to the inside. This means that it tends to be drier on the outside than on the inside. This is known as a moisture gradient where the surface of the board will be at or close to the EMC of the surrounding air, and the deeper you measure into the board, the wetter it gets. The moment there is a moisture gradient, it means that one part of the board is shrinking more than the other. This results in stress due to differential shrinkage. During initial drying, the case or the outside of the board will want to shrink, but it is resisted by the core or the inside that has not started shrinking yet. This means the case is stretched or in tension set and the core is compressed or in compression set. This continues until the core reaches fiber saturation. At this point, stress reversal starts taking place as the core starts shrinking. The much drier shell is now forced to shrink with the shrinking core against its oversized set. This causes compression forces to form in the shell and tension forces to form in the core. This is known as case hardening and will deform a piece of wood when the stress is released. This is typically what the moisture gradient of a board could look like before starting the equalizing process. After equalizing, the moisture gradient will be less and drying stresses should already also be less. After conditioning, the moisture content of the board's shell is raised until stress is relieved and the forks on the prong test stay straight. The danger of conditioning too long is that reverse case hardening can take place. This is when the forks on the prong test points outwards. All sound very confusing? Let's get back to the test kiln. Okay, I've just checked my samples. According to our weight method, sample 1 is at 11 percent and sample 2 is at 5. Also then use the Delmos J2000 to determine the moisture gradient. Sample 1, uh, the shell is at 6%, but it's still about 13 to 14 in the core. And sample 2 is at 6%. Um, the moisture meter doesn't really measure lower than that, so we'll accept that it's 6%. Uh, due to the moisture gradient in sample 1, we can really expect that it to be case hardening. So we will be doing uh, equalization first. If we were only to condition at this stage, we would only partially relieve the stress in the sample one, uh, while the moisture content would still stay high. One should always proceed conditioning with an equalizing phase first. The purpose of equalizing is to bring the moisture content of the wettest board down, while preventing the driest board from drying out further, as well as reducing the moisture gradient of the timber from the inside to the outside. This will already partially relieve the stress. Okay, so you start when the driest sample board is at target minus two. So we're sitting already at 6% with the driest sample. You can increase the dry rub temperature by at least 10 degrees and you set the EMC to your target minus 2%. So if you aim for eight, you set the EMC to six. Now in our little kiln behind me, we're running at 140, so I'm gonna increase it to 150 dB and I have to bring my wet bulb up to 118 to get to 6 EMC. You only stop equalizing when your wetter sample reaches your target moisture content 
of 8% in this case using the weight method. Okay, it is about six hours, seven hours later since we started equalizing. I've just tested the samples again. My wettest sample is at 8% and my driest is still at six according to weight. So I'll be, uh, I'll be doing the, the cut and prong test to see if we have any drying stresses on them. All right, to conduct your prong test, you cut a sample piece of about seven, eight of an inch out of your sample board and no closer to 12 inches from the end of it. I've already cut a piece out for sample board number two, and I've also cut a piece for sample board number one. I'm gonna be sawing them now to see what they do um, before we decide if we want to uh, to uh, condition the timber. Okay, here we go. This is uh, sample board number one. You'll see the pit is right there. Oh, it's already pinching the blade. Right, as can be expected, there is some case hardening on this. You can see the prongs are pointing inwards, so they're pinching. We're gonna have to do some conditioning on this. Sample number two, remember it was at 6% before we started equalizing, and it's still at 6%, so there's really no moisture gradient. So there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any, um, any stress in this. Let's see if it's the truth. Right. As you can see, it's not pinching, no moisture gradient, no stress. Okay, to condition, you need to increase the dry bulb by another 10 degrees higher than what your equalizing temperature was, and you must enable the sprays. So we were running at 150, so we're going to go up to 160 dry bulb, and we're setting the, the EMC to the target moisture content plus 4% until the stress is relieved and the prongs are not uh, coming in anymore. So we're gonna be running dry bulb 160 and wet bulb 150, it's late afternoon. Uh, I'll probably be checking it first thing tomorrow morning when I get into the office. You repeat the prong test until it stops, until the, the prong stays straight. Just a quick rule of thumb that you will only find here and it's completely free of charge. To raise the moisture content of a thousand board foot of a hardwood like red oak by 1% during conditioning requires approximately 25 to 30 pounds of water. Thank you for joining. Keep the questions coming. Until next time, saw straight and dry flat.